back. This is the championship game, Minnesota State University Mavericks versus Bemidji State Beavers. All right, well, it should be an exciting one. Two WCHA teams, I bet most people did not think that would be happening. Um, I didn't either. I was quite surprised Bemidji State got in there. I figured Minnesota State had about a 25% chance. There's about three teams that were definitely uh, higher up on the stat sheet than all the others, and then the rest were quite a ways up there, but not all the way. In this game, can mm-hmm. like, so it in the beginning where it shows the lineups, can anybody be at 100 or is it, or is 99 the max? 99 is the max. I've never okay, seen Mark Michaelis is, is 99. Well, he's having a good day today then. Well, here he comes down trying to get him on the board. Nothing so far. Here comes Adam Brady. Nothing for him. Here comes Toomey. Offset. <laughs> well, that's a disappointing one for Toomey there. So. so looking back at the brackets, I haven't put the winner in there yet. Oh. So Bemidji State got here. Well, here they come. Oh, my. There's a goal. Adam Brady from Muck. So it looks like the Mavericks are in a hole to start out here. Bemidji State won nothing. Tommy Muck with the nice assist there on the one-timer to Adam Brady. Adam Brady's had a huge huge uh, tournament so far. I maybe have to go back and see what all the stats were because <laughs> a lot of weird things came up where I couldn't quite get to... I was planning on doing the uh, stats with it, but I didn't quite get to it because all the weird stuff that happened. Like that uh, one game where... Uh, first game when North Dakota when I didn't get the stats at the end and then also the Mavericks last game where well, that didn't come up. But here we have it. Uh, Bemidji State up one nothing early. Mavericks trying to find a way to get back in their gold and purple. Uh, Bemidji State in the the green in green here. Green, white, and uh, I think they have some black on their uh, blazers there. Here they come down trying to get a 2 nothing lead. And just give it to McKay, let him do it. Now we have uh, Drads to Smith. Huge shot by Smith. Doesn't go. So Bemidji State got here by beating North Dakota uh, last round. Before that, they defeated Arizona State and Denver. Uh, The Mavericks have defeated uh, Maine, UMass Lowell, and last round Cornell. Oh, up by the guard! What the heck? What kind of goal was that? Wow. We'll we'll call that a Charlie Gerard goal, I guess, today, because he's the guy who made it. That was quite the impressive uh, goal, I guess, you'd say, Uh, although not impressive on Charlie Gerard's. Case, just a really weird glitchy kind of I can't believe it went in kind of deal. Mark McKellis just slapped it as hard as he could. Sometimes that works. You get the rebound goals from that. So a 1-1 game here. Uh, kind of an unexpected start. Uh, two pretty good goalies here. Both were top 10 finalists in uh, the Richter Award. Oh, oh but maybe State scores! My goodness. Aaron Miller. This is a lot of goals <laughs> Two, the last two goals were not what you call pretty goals, would you, Ted? Mm, I don't know. Well, they've, I don't been, know. they've been kind of ugly. I mean, they didn't. <laughs> they haven't really been. A, that would have been more a pretty goal from Adam or Aaron Miller right there if they were winning. So, 2-1 lead for Bemidji State. Looks like the Mavericks were right back in the driver's seat, and things just didn't go their way. Oh, my goodness! McNeely with the beautiful pass to one-timing Gerads. A <laughs> 2-2 two two game. Lots of scoring here suddenly, huh? Dallas Gerard is who scored the winning goal in Minnesota State University versus Maine. That's true. That was the goal. He did have the golden goal. The only goal, in fact. And that was that one where he talked about how Swayman somehow passed it to Gerard's and Gerard just said, Okay, thank you. (laughs) Well, there we go. The Mavericks have just about gave up another one, but they figured that out that uh, just got to get it away. All right, two to two game with 3:20 left. Toomey tries to get a little bit of a uh, slapper in there, doesn't quite go. Oh, there's a, whoa! That was a, one so hard that the McKay had to do two different dives, little leg uh, kick actions there. Offside. Yep, there you go, super fast in the corner. <laughs> Without even moving, he he's he's like ooh. Ooh. I would agree to that assessment, sir. And here comes Nathan Smith 
Tries a little slap shot, doesn't quite go. Oh, big slapper to uh, McKay. Gives it off. Here comes Charlie Gerard and Nathan Smith. Back to Gerard. Oh, come in. Driscoll has been... Uh... Oh, uh, oh, Driscoll's not had a very... I mean, I'd say for both these goalies, Driscoll and uh, McKay, they haven't had their, their best games here. Both have played really great so far in this tournament. And in real life, they did as well. Oh, my! <laughs> Although McKay is making up for it right here. My goodness, did you see that thing? Uh-huh. Uh, last two he's had to deal with there. Well, the Mickey State's really put a lot of pressure on. They somehow got past North, a great North Dakota team. And there's another one. My goodness, they just put pressure nonstop on these goalies here. That, that first line is just tremendous for the Mickey State. Which includes Adam Brady, um, Owen Sillinger, and uh, Aaron Mueller. Or Miller, sorry, Aaron Miller. So big time goal or good big time uh, players. Shy going to the box with the last 15 seconds here of the first period. And McKay's looks like he's gonna probably hang on to this one. Yep. <laughs> I think he's learned his lesson today. Uh, that one goal he gave up, but he probably says, "Yeah, I don't want to do that again." I'm sure uh, Driscoll would say, "Electronic Driscoll would stay the same." All right, uh, we have a one or two to two game after. Uh, one period, 13 shots for Bemidji, 11 for the MSU. Uh, Bemidji did have that, bre that breakaway. Both have one out of one on one timers. They've had a pretty good success there. Uh, attack zone, Minnesota State has one extra second. So pretty even. A little second. Bemidji State still working with a minute 40 worth of power play and now going to have a th five on three advantage unless they score here. Five on three it is. Mark Michaelis, boy, Michaelis picking up penalties. He rarely picked up penalties during the regular year. In fact, if I look it up here, which I do have, um, Michaelis had this year. You know, like, somehow he got cut off on there. No, there he is. Michaelis had, uh, for penalties this whole year, he had, where is it, uh, four minutes. So, not... Often do you get penalties from Michaelis, and here he's got two in the same game. Or was it last game? Maybe it was last game. Yeah. What, was, what happened in the last game? Michaelis, did, did he have the penalty last game in this game, or did he have two penalties this game? I think it may have been last game. Either way, you don't see many penalties from him. All of a sudden, he's spending a lot of time in the box. Well, good idea from McKay not to give it up there. The well, State still has 19 seconds left on the power play. Go ahead. Or maybe it was because I remember Mark Michaelis had at least one in the last game. Yep. Yeah, I can't. I think you're right. I think it was last game of this game. Well, now we're we're back to full strength. Coming down. Oh my! That would have been a, a big one there. Uh, Adam Brady just. Uh, I mean, he's trying to become the star of the tournament here. Parker Toomey. Oh, he gets penalty coming up. Toomey was just about to blast it and got hit from behind. Penalty shot. Are you kidding me? Oh, Driscoll just said no dice. If uh, Toomey turns around there, he's got a chance, but Driscoll is just up for the up for the challenge. Oh, big one-timer. Oh, num number three for Bemidji State, Tommy Muck. Had a pretty big game so far. He had that great assist on the first goal, and there he just stopped that one from having any chance of coming back. Here comes Michaelis, though. Ooh, tries to shoot from behind the back and <laughs> gets a little steam on that one. Uh, Sillinger didn't have much chance there. And was staying offside. Now they're onside. About an interception by Souter. Oh, can't quite Jack Diesel that one in. Driscoll did a great job of uh, keeping that one out for a second. Oh, my. That would have been a big one for Adam Brady. He was looking all alone there for just a moment. Oh, Dra uh, Drads just didn't pull the trigger there. He had his chance. All right, coming down the ice here, number 11, Charlie Combs. Oh, that was a sneaky little one there by uh, number 22, Tyler Vold. And offside. So Bemidji State keeping up the heat, even without the power, the power player. All right, coming down the ice. Nope, just slapping it into a bunch of players. Michaelis, oh, can't quite stay onside. 
3.56 left in the second period here of the championship game of our uh, NCAA Frozen Four uh, NHL 94 tournament. Oh, big slap by Toomey. You know, in the first couple games, we didn't hear a whole lot from Toomey, but now all of a sudden, the last two games, he's been all over the place. What a great passing display there by the Mavericks, but Bemidji State says, well, I can do that too. Big slapper. Um, looks like he may... Okay, he stayed on side, apparently. Ooh, good stop there by the Mavericks. And now on a breakaway. Here comes Hookinson. Oh, no dice. Oh! Driscoll was sprawled out. Couldn't quite pull the trigger. Though the Mavericks... Oh, off the post! And Hookinson gets the puck, but looks like he's going for slashing. Probably saved a goal by slashing there, because I think otherwise... He's got a little bit more room and doesn't hit the pipe. All right. Nathan Smith just says, I'll get it in there. Anything you want to add there, Teddy? Um, just anything I want to say about anything? Yeah, what do you think about the action so far? Been pretty good. I hope the Mavericks win. Well, I know you're, you're definitely even a uh, electronic Maverick fan, being the guy who played with them, <laughs> played the Mavericks uh, all throughout the season until we got to the tournament. Well, here the Mavericks have a little bit of a slight breakaway. A big shot from Nathan Smith doesn't go. This is the championship game, it so, is. so if this is your first one in this tournament you're watching, go watch a different one. <laughs> yeah, that's a good suggestion. Yep. All right. Looks like we're going to be going to the third period. Two to two game. Hey, one of their sticks went up in the air. It looked, it looked like they, it looked like he was celebrating. Well, nothing to celebrate yet unless he were one of the guys who scored a goal. <laughs> All right. So Mavericks had a little bit more time than the attack zone there. They were up by one second last period. This time it's 50. Getting a little more opportunity. Even though the Breavers had a five on three power play opportunity in that last period. Nobody scored though. It's just been a lot of stuff in that first period with a lot of craziness and all of a sudden we've kind of calmed her down here. We have ourselves a real game. And of course, uh, I must say this to anybody who's going, Mavericks and Beavers, well that seems suspect or yeah, I must be he's a WCHA fan. Well I am, but I just programmed him in. That's just how it went. If you want to make your own tournament, I totally invite you to do so. Uh, you can get a hold of me, you can DM me, or you can uh, let me know on Twitter at uh, BoblinMavs. Um, let me know, and I'll, I'll hook you up with this game. I can hook it up with you and tell you how you can get this going on your own computer, or uh, uh, we have it on the Wii U as well. I can help you get through that going if you'd like to try it out yourself. And you can make your own tournament, and it might be totally different results. Who knows? Mavericks and Beavers could both lose in the first round that time. You just never know. But just a little uh, public service announcement for you. Oh, Nathan Smith! Oh, runs into the goalie. Doesn't quite get it. But there's no... Uh, sometimes you get the uh, interference charge. Or interference uh, call on that. A charge for two minutes in the box, I guess you could say. Ooh, tried to come a little bit there. Alex Arillo just couldn't quite get it past the, uh, the center point. And here comes Drads. Uh, we had uh, Nathan Smith coming down there, but he didn't quite get that stick out. 6.45 left. Oh, big shot. Holy cow. Did you see that shot? Uh-huh. That was a huge one. I wonder if this one will go to overtime. Well, you never know. It'd be pretty exciting to have the championship game to go to overtime. We went to a championship game last year that went to overtime, didn't we? In 2019, that is, with the WCHA championship. Oh, yeah. That, yeah, that one was yep. very exciting. Yep. Minnesota State and Bowling Green. Now, had they uh, played the games out here, uh, there would have been a chance that the Mavericks and Bowling Green would have maybe rekindled that matchup because Bowling Green was playing Bemidji State uh, when everything went down. There's Gerads going to the box. Um, and the Mavericks are going to play uh, Michigan Tech, so who knows what could have happened there. But many people thought this was probably the best chance of, you know, obviously there are two home teams going to the WCHA Finals playing. Uh, just happened to be in our our fictitious national championship here somehow.
still very surprised Bemidji State got this far. But like I said, they do have that. They have Driscoll, who's a pretty good goalie, very hot at the end of the year. And they have a very good first line, and their other lines aren't too bad either. Sometimes that's all you need. All right. A little more than four and a half minutes left here. Bemidji. Oh, Shide saves. Oh, my. <laughs> that looked like that was going in. How the... How McKay and Mavericks made that stop, I don't know. 4.19 left. 39 seconds left on the power play for Bemidji State. Wilkinson coming down, for some reason passes it. And now we have Smith just blasted at the goalie. Trying to see if there's any rebound opportunity. Nothing comes back. Uh-oh, another penalty by the Mavericks. Boy, they're not trying to get the tying goal here, it seems. They're putting themselves down. A guy each time. So the WCHA championship last year was like so so intense. Yeah, it was. So the Mavericks were down two to nothing with like one minute left, and then they scored, and then they scored when when it was actually like one one thirty something I think. It was like one. And and then and then the next goal they scored was fifty nine point with was was with fifty nine point five left. Something like that, yeah. And then they scored a, about a minute and a half, two minutes into overtime. It wasn't too long into overtime when they scored. Yeah, it was only like two minutes. Yeah. So, well, we'll see. Maybe it'll get to there this time. Who knows? But the Mavericks are now still down one guy, although they got one of their guys back. And also, the the winning WCHA championship goal was actually a smart play by by Nick Rivera. Yeah. But when nobody even saw him, and and that. Well, Bowling Green didn't see him, so he was like hidden behind the net. Yep. And then like the puck came over to him, came over to him, and and then he and then he just scores. Ooh, big blast there by oh oh nothing going. Yeah, it was a good play. Uh oh, here we got a little bit of a breakaway. Oh no. Ooh. Oh my, big stop there. Thank goodness, McKay. Looks like Eli Elias Rosen had a chance there. Thank goodness, McKay. Nope. <laughs> one minute left, it looks like here. Last minute, we'll see if this one goes through overtime. Offside by Andre. I think it will go to overtime. Yeah, could be right. A two to two tie still. Here comes the Provnik coming down the ice. Ooh, a little bit of a shot there. Here comes Spooner. Oh, there it is! He scores! Reggie Lutz! 33 seconds left! Can you believe it? Um... Did you see that one-timer? Mm, yeah, but it seems like a kind of normal one-timer. Okay. <laughs> well, it was a big, in the big game, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. So there it is. The Mavericks look like they're going to win the championship because there's not much time left. There's lots again. There it is. The Mavs have won it. They have won the fictitious national championship. <laughs> again, if anybody wants to make their own national championship and put it on YouTube, that'd be awesome. But there it is. We have our winner. Charlie Girard is the player of the game. He had a great game. I don't know if you can, you know, after Lutz scored there, if you would not give it to Lutz on there, but they did. Tied with the shots on goal for the Mavericks. Uh, Bemidji State, 8 minutes and 24 seconds worth of power play. <laughs> Mavericks own the zone, though, by over a minute and a half. Even with all those power plays, a one-timer, the Mavericks were 2 for 8, and those two were huge game goals. What did you think of the game, Ted? Pretty good. Yeah, well, I know it doesn't really actually mean a whole lot in the grand scheme of things, but it was still fun to watch and fun to make these games, right? Uh-huh. Yep, so Brillo had seven shots on goal for the Beavers. Uh, Driscoll saved 90% of the shots. Going to the Maverick stats now. If I press the button right, there we go. 33 shots for the Beavers, 31 saves from McKay. And that was the difference. Charlie Girard, Reggie Lutz, and Dallas Girard with goals and assists. We have McNeely, Spooner, and Napravnik. Uh, looks like uh, shots on goal. Smith and Girard, that line did a lot. Well, it's been a lot of fun, guys. Thank you all for joining us for our championship. What do you got to say, Ted? Bye. Goodbye, everybody. And again, let me know if you'll make your own. See you later. A Bobbin Mavic Production. Can I listen to it?